In this video, I'm going to put on uh, the moldings or quarter rounds at my main entrance and also um, uh, like a quarter round on where it meets the wall uh, over there. Uh, moldings come in different uh, sizes and shapes. The one we chose is this T-molding or T-molding that it's called. This is a T-molding threshold. This is the one we're going to use at the two main entrances. The one is the back door entrance over here and there's another front door entrance. Uh, we purposely kept this gap of about uh, three eight or more than half an inch so that we can fit the molding in here when we lay the floors. Uh, the quarter round, it's called a quarter round because it's it's a it's a it's a round quarter of a round. This is the most common molding. This is solid wood that we got. This is the molding we're going to use um, over at the edges wherever it meets the wall, uh, the brick wall, so to speak. And also under the cabinets, uh, uh, cabinets uh, where the wooden floor meets the cabinets in the kitchen. Now, starting with the T molding, it's called a T molding because it looks like a T at the end over here. Now, this bottom part of the T is supposed to get in the middle over here, but it's obviously not going to fit. So what I'm going to do is cut this piece off over here with my table saw. So it will be more like an L molding rather than a T molding. And then I'll have a nice flat surface on this side. So when I bring my T mold to the table saw, uh, I can either cut it past, cut it like this, pass it like this, or I can cut it this way. This way seems to be a more, uh, proper choice because I can use this flat surface on the table saw uh, to pass it but still I'm gonna have a wobble uh, like this I need to keep this flat surface on the table properly so I can have a nice clean cut so what I'll be doing is using these Home Depot pencils uh, thankfully or fortunately the thickness of this pencil matches the thickness uh, of this um, strip over here so when I keep the pencil the pencil and this and this uh, flat surface and the pencils flat surface uh, they match so now I can keep the pencil here if I can stick the pencil somehow here uh, I can use this to pass over the pencil so that it's stable and I don't have a wobble So what I have done here is put some painter's tape around the pencil, put a painter tape on the surface of the table. Then I took my T-mold and adjusted the fence by making sure the teeth of the blade is cutting at the right place. Uh, I wanted to cut right here uh, in a line, in a straight line. Once I set up the fence, I just took a super glue uh, and super glued these pencils on the tabletop. So now these pencils are not moving and they will provide me a support to pass the uh, T molding to make that cut. Here's my cut piece. This is a L mold rather than a T mold and I have the flat surface that I needed. So the problem I have now is that this particular part is about a quarter of an inch thick and my uh, flooring is about half an inch. So if I want this part to stick to this concrete down here, it's not reaching that concrete. So what I've done is cut about uh, 3 8 of an inch or so piece like this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick it on top of this like this with the glue uh, once the glue is cured and now this whole thing thickness is now able to will be able to reach the concrete so I can use the um, adhesive uh, construction adhesive to stick it to this uh, part over here so I have clamped glued and clamped uh, the two pieces this is my original a threshold piece and this is the extra width that I'm adding this side over here is gonna stick to the cement with the construction glue look something like this from the bottom 
So what I use for this gluing is uh, the Eurobond D3 floating floor glue. This is something I bought to add glue to the snapping mechanism uh, to put the floors down. So here's the dry fit after a few adjustments. I'm cutting this angle over here and cutting this trim over here so it goes under, but it fits nicely. Dry fitted all the way. Now we're just gonna take it out, put some construction glue on this end and stick it to this edge over here and maybe nail it with a uh, pressure gun. Before I apply the glue, I, it's always a good idea to dry fit everything and know beforehand how I'm gonna put apply pressure uh, before I put the glue in. When I started installing this, um, I changed my mind. I used uh, silicone gel on the part that was touching the door frame, and then I put construction glue on that exposed concrete. This was the finished product after 24 hours of drying. Now for the quarter rounds, I used my miter saw. Most miter saws have the ability to cut at 45 degrees. It's recommended to cut at 45 degrees, uh, especially obviously at corners and also to join two of these uh, um, quarter rounds together. If I had any special cuts or I had to shape it to a specific mold, I would use the jigsaw to cut it. After dry fitting, I put construction glue on the bottom and the back side that touches those bricks. And here's the finished product. This is usually the kind of transition that is used between uh, two uh, rooms or sometimes from one room to bathroom. So this is a T mold uh, transition. So usually the, the, the right way to do it or the usual way to do it is that you put glue on these two surfaces and these two surfaces obviously sit on the two surfaces of the, of the uh, one side and the other. Uh, but sometimes if the two surfaces are not even or not coplanar, uh, then you can't really glue. In my case, one mistake we did when doing the bathroom is we didn't use uh, um, the self-leveling cement. So the bathroom is actually sloping down here, but this is level. So these two surfaces are not coplanar. They're not in the same plane. It's sort of messed up. I can't fix it. The only way uh, to put the transition in is to jerry-rig it somehow because I cannot apply glue on this side it's just not gonna stick properly so the solution to that is depend on this uh, piece this center piece to uh, to glue in so when I uh, if I glue in with my center somehow I have to make it stick in the middle and the glue the the strength of the glue is gonna keep the threshold in place uh, so I have to jerry-rig it somehow Put a, a shim or something here, stick it on the bottom and make it stick on the bottom. If I didn't have that problem, the coplanar problem, I would have it would have been much, much easier to just use the transition as is, uh, gluing on these two sides. Instead now I have to glue on the middle. So it depends on scenario to scenario how uh, we can use this uh, transition piece, how to glue it basically. This is another example at my front entrance where the concrete slab is actually sloping down uh, when it goes towards the entrance. So my flooring, it doesn't touch the, under, the slab underneath. So this is where I again need to depend on the center of the threshold and glue that down so it pulls the floor and keeps it down uh, touching the slab. 
one quick note about these kind of partitions or thresholds it's always a good idea to buy this beforehand so I know the total width of the partitions and also this middle part that goes in this valley over here so one mistake we did is we even though I gauged a little bit I started the wood flooring a little too um, ahead or in front I should have started a little bit behind because now when I put the partition in you can see here that it goes beyond this edge of this door because the door needs this whole space over here and a whole space over here now when I'm closing the door it's not closing properly so this needs to be a little bit more behind like this right at this edge over here where the door closes now what I will do to fix this is basically cut off maybe one eighth of an inch or so maybe one quarter along this line so this partition or this threshold moves back a little bit and aligns with this this particular trim over here and that way the door won't interfere but that's something we learn by doing mistakes and uh, I won't repeat it again here's the modified threshold I added some shims to add to the thickness and I'm gonna uh, glue that down uh, at the center and here's the finished product